Hi. Does it sound like there's a howling cold wind outside? Possibly a rainstorm. Ooh, and a campfire. Is that what that is? Ooh, and that was some thunder. Yeah. That's because it's hooked up to my little white noise maker. And that's what I've been sleeping to lately. You know, I usually have uh, really cool ambient music, but uh, not this time. I just wanted that. It's just been pleasing me so. So, you know, a lot of people come to me for advice. And spiritual advice, mostly. Where's that thing? Glare. Um, yeah. uh, and I'm more than willing to give it. And how do you channel? How do you do this? How do you do that? Um, whatever. That's fantastic. But I think far and away the most common question I've ever gotten is... It's not even a qu well, it is a question, it's two parts of it. I'm in a funk. What do I do to get out of it? I don't seem to have much motivation. I don't have much energy. I feel lethargic and just not sharp, you know, like, not like, there's no zest for life. Um, what do I do? <laughs> Let me just say, also, I've been formulating this video in my head at least a little bit. And the stuff that I put on my webs on my um, in my channel is the stuff that I do. I do language of light activations for myself within my own practice while I'm doing my practices. I use the Akadua in my own practice. I do Qigong all the time now, <laughs> every chance I get. And it's become a huge part of my life that's the stuff that works <laughs> you know that's the stuff that I put on my channel because it works so every time somebody asks me asks me a question this is why I stopped I try to stop doing the intuitive consultation thing because they'll say you know what do I need to do to advance spiritually and I'll tune in and I'll say oh well you've got this block chakra and you've got this and that you need to do qigong you need to make sure your diet is okay you need to all the stuff that I do. Can I make a language of light activation for you if you're interested in that, if that resonates with you? Would you like to go down that path? Look at my, you know, look at my channel. This is all the stuff that works. That's what's there. That's what I'm going to recommend to everybody because that's what I know. You know, so it's, and Ormus. Take Ormus. Take lots and lots of Ormus. It's, it's all there, you know, and so when people come, it's just becoming like a, I almost feel like I want to have like a packaged response or something. Just be like, here, this, that, and the other. Go. Um, but I just wanted to talk in general <clears throat> about that, about being in a funk, about being stuck. Being in a funk, at least in my mind, uh, can be a funk in a lot of places. You can be in a mental funk, you can be in a physical funk. You can be in a karmic funk, which is an energetic funk, but, <laughs> I'm saying funk a lot, but the overarching theme of all of those problems or blockages or whatever is energy. So if you get up in the morning and it takes you a really long time to wake up and you're just kind of moping about and that feeling sort of stays with you all day and then you get tired again in the middle of the day or you're like sitting in front of your computer doing your work and you just pause there and just be like what what am I doing this for this is this stupid I just don't feel like it's gonna make much of a difference if I go this way if I go that way if I finish it if I keep typing if I don't you know there's just nothing is nothing is happening like I feel like I could be more content staring and doing nothing you know and I'm still not even interested in doing that that kind of a funk at least that's that's the way probably I experience it and so I'm describing it that way if that's what you're like the first thing I tell people is well what's your diet like and okay you know if I were one of those people who had a perfect diet I would be telling you that I'm awesome and I only eat raw organic fruits and vegetables all the time and don't kill animals and all that stuff. I'm not. I still eat meat. I still eat vegetables that aren't organic. I wish I could change that. Maybe I'll get involved with some people soon. I, I, 
made some friends who are in like a co food cooperative and I've been going to a farm and their stuff is actually organic even though they don't call it organic because they're not certified organic because it's a really long process and it costs a lot of money but the farm is still organic you know and so I've been trying to do better but I'm not perfect when it comes to diet I still like pepperoni pizza okay you know but when I eat it now because my system has changed so much if I eat it or whatever I instantly get diarrhea if I put horrible food in my body it turns to liquid it just it just goes right through and your body is like god get rid of that it doesn't want any of it it can't use any of it because either it's not a good in, not good ingredients or it's been in a weird place made in a weird you know restaurant in the middle of the city with lots of bad energy coming at it and it's full of all of that or whatever or it's the cured meat I don't know I'm not one of those people who's perfect but I try to eat lots of vegetables and I do uh, I don't eat much fruit actually um, I try to stay away from meat and I'll eat chicken you know every once in a while and I'll eat I, I eat a lot of salmon now um, and, and I'm fine with that I don't have a problem with eating meat <clears throat> I have a problem with killing things, <laughs> uh, and I have a problem with the food industry. Anyway, I I'm talking too much about this, but you know, I I'm not one of those people uh, who's a total health nut and, and eating perfect organic food and, and raw and vegan and crazy. Um, I don't know if I ever will be. I I'm moving towards what my version of that perfect diet is, which right now still includes some lean protein. Uh, animal protein, but I don't know, because if I eat too much meat, then I get cocked up. Uh, but I'm not one of those freaky people. So when I say to somebody, how's your diet, you know, I'm not pronouncing judgment upon you and saying, well, you need to do this and that. But you do need to do this and that. <laughs> you need to stop eating fast food. You need to stop eating uh, frozen packaged food, you know. I still use frozen peas, you know. I mean, like, there are certain things that you can make exceptions for or whatever, but processed food and fast food just doesn't cut it. it, it just, it's not going to serve you well at all. Um, and less animal protein. I don't process meat very well anymore. Um, and if you do that, then you're going to change something. However, I have a friend who's a pescatarian and he eats fine and he's on several types of medications because he can't get out of his funk. I really want to pull him <laughs> along, especially lately, and be like, here, look, 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 take all of this Ormus and then drink some water and we're going to go buy some fresh fruits and vegetables at the farm so that you can have those instead of whatever it is you're eating. I'm not sure if his diet is that great, even though he is a vegetarian. He probably still eats a lot of cheese and, and, and you know, foods from Alberto's or whatever. Uh, and make him do energy work with me so that we can get him out of his depression because he's bipolar and, and, and yeah, it's, it's much more complicated than that, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, right. <clears throat> so there are people that that are in a different type of funk or whatever that's but that's where you start what are you eating what are you putting into your body that might be making you funky <laughs> and not in a good way after that then what stands to reason is okay energy work what is in your body that food is not going to clear out and there are other two other ways that I recommend getting rid of the blockages in your system in your body if you have a hard time approaching people, that can be looked at as an energetic blockage. You don't have, you know, your chakra isn't open enough and receptive enough and vibrating enough to actually want that experience and that changes your personality or whatever. It's, it's not always like that, otherwise we'd all be the same who had our chakras blown open or whatever. But it could, it can be looked at in that way. In the same way, if your meridians are clogged up in certain areas of your body or whatever, you're not going to have any motivation because the vital energy stored up down here isn't going to get to other places and flow and make you perk up easily in the morning, it isn't going to make your mind alert, and you're not going to be able to do the things you need to do, and you're going to feel funky. Um, and so I recommend doing Qigong. And I want to make another video about this if I have time. The most important thing you'll ever learn uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff is spontaneous adjustment qigong. 
Uh, you can learn Qigong forms, and they're fantastic. And I even have recommended some recently, and I love them. I love them both, and I'm still doing them. But what a lot of people don't realize is that the forms didn't come first to clear out blockages in the meridians and energy centers of the body. The meridians told people what forms to do to clear out those blockages. That's where the forms came from. All original Qigong is spontaneous Qigong. Now, okay, I'm making this two videos. I was going to, but now I'm putting it into both of them, so I'm just going to not worry about the second one. <clears throat> it's a really weird phenomenon, but when you do open up to the energy of the Earth, in particular the magnetic force of the Earth, so basically you're standing and you're getting all of your alignments and you're very, very relaxed and open and, and uh, receptive, ready for this kind of stuff, and then you connect to that gravity of the earth, the pole, and then you connect to the heavens and whatever, and you're just feeling like that, and you try to remain completely open and have your mind be completely blank and just ready for whatever, eventually your body will start to move in ways, and it's completely spontaneous. This is distinct from what might be called free form qigong, which is not a thing, I don't think. Uh, but sometimes I've seen it like in like, you know, wacky representations in, you know, modern sitcoms about yoga classes and, you know, people who get together to do this type of energy work or whatever and they're hmm ah, now let's do some free form and just do 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 you know, this is this is really lame interpretive dance. That's not Qigong. And that's not spontaneous Qigong. Spontaneous Qigong means involuntary Qigong. I did not tell my arm to go this way. I didn't tell my head to jerk this way and start swaying back and forth. And things that happen when you do open yourself up to spontaneous adjustment Qigong are quite weird. They're quite wacky. Well, I would argue that, <laughs> just in case you're having uh, problems with the things that you might do uh, <laughs> in doing spontaneous Qigong, uh, I would say that it's much more wacky to live with all of those blockages in place so that you're not living a zestful, uh, loving, open, blissful, ecstatic life. Abundant as well. Uh, that's what we should all be doing, if that's what you want, unless you want a life of total deprivation and solace, whatever. Um, so, I'm just going to read a couple things about spontaneous adjustment qigong, and uh, I should have prepared for this, but I was going to do this in another video. Okay. This is a pretty long article, but let me just see. Uh, if I can... Breathing is very important. <laughs> Learning spontaneous Qigong. Just type in spontaneous Qigong and this is like the first article you'll find. This article discusses perhaps the simplest type of Qigong. It is called Zi Fa Gong or spontaneous Qigong. I am not an expert, neither am I. It is actually very simple to learn. One should find a large, quiet place, preferably a large, flat grass area to practice. One then just stands with his feet about one shoulder width apart, with the knees slightly bent but with the upper body straight and the hands by the sides of the body. One should keep the whole body relaxed, including shoulders, body, hands, and feet. One should also try to empty the mind. Do not think about anything, all this may be difficult to accomplish. Uh, the eyes should be softly closed, although they can be opened if the need arises. The reason that spontaneous Qigong may be the simplest type is because unlike Qigong or martial arts, it is not necessary to use the mind to direct the qi. As previously mentioned, a spontaneous Qigong practitioner should empty his mind. Um, yes. So what will happen, you might take a couple, eventually, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, you might be sitting there for two days. No. Um, what ha might happen eventually is you might take a couple of steps forward or backward. You might start bending forward. For me, when I'm doing spontaneous adjustment qigong and I'm standing, a lot of, like this happens. I go all the way down here and I get stuck. Uh, and then energy is moving and moving and moving and no, I 
not doing it voluntarily. It's not that you have absolutely no control, otherwise, you know, you probably wouldn't remember it. It's not that. You are still aware. But these things are happening, and you're aware of the fact as well that I didn't put myself down here on purpose. And I'm not getting up, not on purpose. Oh, now I'm back up here, and then other things happen. Bending forward, bending backward, walking forward, walking backward, walking around in a circle, running in place. That happens a lot. <laughs> sort of turns into a dance. Uh, twisting one's body into all kinds of positions. Uh, shaking the arms. <laughs> this happens a lot. Uh, all kinds of facial expressions. Uh, and for me, vocal expressions. This is how I started pretty much doing uh, language of light activations. You open yourself up to this possibility, to the great pole, you know, the Tai Chi, and you allow yourself to be in the middle of yin and yang, okay, yin, up here, yeah, 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 down there, and heaven and earth or whatever, and something happens in between, like in between two magnets, and you're the guy in the middle somehow, in that forest or whatever, trying to remain in pure Tao with your mind empty and surrendering and open and blah 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 and energy starts to move through you and up through you down through you and up through you and do all kinds of things to your body and things start happening in a good way and when that happens particularly one of the interesting things of the human body is vocal production when it happens to the vocal centers or speech centers or whatever you want to call it uh, you start to make noises and it could be just as simple as ba 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 you know, and, uh, uh, you know, ha, ha, and all these things as you're making these weird movements and involuntarily and doing whatever. Or, for me, eventually, it became this focused light language. This is what the energy means, like I'm, I'm putting it into one package and speaking it, you know, as opposed to... And what, what's really interesting to me is when I'm doing this type of activity, which looks retarded, Forgive the expression. Forgive me. I know that's not a good word, but you do look a little retarded when you're making all these things. <sighs> so um, it's really strange. Uh, for me, what just started happening eventually... Oh yeah, what, what is really strange about it is that, in particular, you stop moving when you start speaking. Sometimes it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going, but when it starts to turn into the more rapid-fire language of light stuff, the movements stop, and it's like the vocal production takes over, and so it's like all of this energy is being manifested on the throat chakra level. It's out here and creating, creating something else, something else, something else. Not necessarily the physical movement, get that bad chi out of my arm, you know, that kind of thing. This is going to be a weird video. Um... I observed every one of the movements, people, rapidly in a circle. Uh, the amount of time it takes an individual to get into this state varies, blah, blah, blah. I have to be very relaxed, mind in a good place, a light smile helps. Just think of yourself as like, I don't know, uh, interpretation. Okay, no, that's enough. Um, how would I do with my other book? Dang. I guess it doesn't want to be here. Anyway, there's another book that I'm reading about Nagong, and I've been saying that for a long time. I don't know if I've actually finished it, because I'm actually trying to practice the things as I go along. But um, it talks about spontaneous Qigong in a different way, um, that when you get to a certain point in your Nagong practice and everything is loose and your whole body is changed and blah, 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 then you start to try to physically roll over the lower Dantian. So you're taking this ball of energy that's down here below your navel and physically rolling it over. I, I don't know exactly what that's about. But, um, is that one of the things that often happen is spontaneous Qigong. And one of the interesting things that he talks about in this book is that people get under the wrong impression. They get the impression that the movement is some type of, you know, divine activity, and it is to a certain extent, you know, spirit moving through you, or whatever, and you'll see Pentecostals do this as well, and moving all over the place, and spontaneous dancing, and ah, and then they'll get stuck to the floor and start laughing for half an hour. 
that's fantastic. Those people are going to be a little more energetically healthy than the rest of the crazy other Christians out there who keep everything inside and try to forget about it. And then, you know, bust out a rifle. Uh, but they're doing it for different reasons, and they think it means something else. So these people are often under the lead, under the uh, uh, arm of a very charismatic individual who tries to lead them in a certain way, and everything gets all messed up. Okay, um, so that's spontaneous qigong or whatever. I recommend that you get into it. And there are some other weird concerns. Uh, there's some stupid, horrible, insidious information out there about Qigong that I found in my research of this topic, which is basically what it claims Qigong is. It's evil, this information out there. I consider it evil because Qigong is something, it's energy work. You learn to work with energy. You just learn to work with energy and you have an energy practice. That's a good thing. It will help you spiritually, it will help you physically, it will make you a healer, it will make you a channel, it will make you all of these amazing things that everybody has the right to be. And this information that I found out there basically says that it's satanic. Don't even know where to begin with how wrong that is, okay? But there are some things that happen that can scare people. <laughs> you want to know what it really feels like to channel? It's not just hearing this vague little voice in your head. It feels like having your consciousness pushed out of the way or having it engulfed by something else. That can freak people out if you've never felt it before. You know what I mean? And so people get the wrong impression. It's the demons and it's possession. <laughs> what ever. <sighs> anyway. <clears throat> If the devil is making me a healthier person, sorry, I would like to meet that devil. Uh, anyway, um, so that's the qigong practice, <laughs> and that's what also I, blah, blah, that's what I would recommend to people anyway to get into to get out of a funk. Uh, there's also yoga. Yoga works for some people, and there are types of meditation and breathing exercises. Particularly, I tell people to do the Breath of Fire a lot. That will help you get out of your funk. Look up Breath of Fire. And that's a good way to start a practice, even a Qigong practice. Um, and the other thing is Ormus. Ormus, if, you're, if you have a poor diet, or if you, for some reason, can't get you know good fruits and vegetables or whatever, Ormus can help clear out your system. Anyway, even if you are engaging in a healthy diet and uh, have, you know, good fresh food and everything, Ormus will supplement it in a great way and clear out your system of other blockages that you might not be able to clear out otherwise. I don't know. I've been taking it for so long and it affected me in so many ways that I can't say for sure, like, because <laughs> I basically started, like, my Akadua uh, journey and then I started the spontaneous adjustment qigong stuff, and then I started taking Ormus, and it was like, you know, everything feeds into everything else. I don't know, I mean, I know what everyone does, and I know what everyone feels like, and the differences, and when I was doing it, what I experienced then, but it was all connected, you know, and so it's difficult to say exactly what it would do for you specifically in isolation. But Ormus is terrific. It's like, liquid chi in a bottle. Some of the things, uh, some of the products out there are actually called liquid chi, I think, or various things. Um, similar titles. Uh, and it is, actually, uh, when you consider the fact that vital energy jing, uh, <laughs> this is gonna sound gross, is related to sexual energy. In the man, at least, it's related to semen. And you know, I've had people <laughs> pour out some Ormus and be like, it looks like semen, you know, I'm like, yeah, it kind of does, it's kind of thick and viscous and white and creamy, and yeah, this is totally inappropriate, I know, but, um, it's like super chi, it's there, yeah, that's what it is, you know, it, it's like super concentrated chi. Anyway, so you take that, <clears throat> now that you have this wonderful image in your mind, 
and um, it can clear things out very rapidly uh, from, I want to say, a cellular level. And so that can start working on the karmic stuff. Now, I was talking about um, energy work and qigong and all that type of thing, all those types of things, from an energetic perspective, just energy blockages in the body, physical energy blockages. But when you do start to go down a layer further, qigong practice, spontaneous adjustment practice, uh, Nagong practice, all that stuff, even, you know, real yoga practice will take you to a cellular level and eventually to a level of the DNA. And you will start to clear out the junk that is in your genetic structure. <laughs> so we all have a bunch of junk in there along with all the good stuff as well. And yeah. So that's also where the language of light stuff comes in. It's a very high energy and it programs your body from a much more subtle level, a different level. You're not drinking something, which that is going to be cellular, you know, the language of light is probably more uh, different layers of your body, your energy body, working on funk from out there, you know. Um, and yeah, I guess that's probably it. So, those are, this is my funky video. Uh, let's see if I just missed anything. Irmis and Qigong and diet and yeah, that was about it. Um, okay. So yeah, that's what I recommend to get out of funk. And to summarize, or not to summarize, but just to, uh, well, what is this going to do if you start practicing Qigong and you start taking Ormus? and you start eating well and all that. If you don't see changes just from that or whatever, well, you will, <laughs> first of all. You're gonna go through a lot of stages. Specifically, I will talk about, well, I'm just talking about the funk. So, what is it like? Uh, let's just say in the spontaneous practice, because that's what I consider most important. You will start to have experiences of what Buddhists call piti. P-I-T-H-I, -I, I think. At least that's a very light experience that you will have. You will start to feel joyous for no reason. And you'll just be sitting there and smiling like a fool and going, Wow! I feel amazing right now and I have no reason to feel so. It's just piti. When everything is in alignment and energy is flowing correctly, then you can experience bliss. If you've never experienced, no, I always say that wrong, backwards. If you have to ask what bliss feels like, you've never experienced it. That's my phrase. Woo, play with that one. <clears throat> Imagine an orgasm, but in your mind. A mindgasm. That's what bliss can feel like. Imagine the same thing, but in your heart. With every beat of your heart, you're feeling an emotional orgasm. It's that intense. The only thing that comes close is an orgasm. Uh, except that it feels extraordinarily different, and there's no ejaculate. <laughs> to be crass. Uh, yeah. Well, that might be an energetic one, I guess. But um, that's what it can feel like in this practice then once you start once everything starts moving out and you start having those experiences then they continue and they continue and they continue and they spill out into your everyday life and you start to merge with things in your environment and you start to have compassion for things that you never thought you would have compassion before you start to feel motivated to do things that inspire you simply because they make you feel so good that's what this is all about how do I feel motivated to do something? Why don't I feel motivated to do it even though I know it either brings me pleasure or it brings me security or whatever? It's because all of these things are in the way of really merging with that thing, even if it's just an act or an object or the creation of an object, which is an act, uh, etc. So you see where this all comes into the funky stuff? <laughs> um, <clears throat> What else? Uh, yeah. You 
you'll start to have experiences of merging with other forms of consciousness eventually, channeling. Um, you'll start to think about someone and you'll get a big sense of what's going on with them all of a sudden. You just sink into their energetic field and you are making a real connection. Uh, or a person, or I mean, or a deity, or a idea, you know, you'll, you'll start to just have the tingle and it'll just creep into your mind and you'll be like, what the heck was that, you know? And it's not like all of a sudden this idea is there and like, oh, well, now I can see it, now I can see it, you know, and I'm going to write a book about it or anything, necessarily, that might happen. Uh, but you start to have these weird experiences like that. Um, healing, personal healing and healing of others. <laughs> you're you're going to start to realize... Uh, ah, yeah. that you need mouthwash um, you're going to start to experience and feel and recognize chi and jing and shen the different types of energy that run through your body um, you're going to start to have heat in your palms in the soles of your feet you're going to start to during practice or after practice or whatever and you should always close down in this practice or whatever do a lot of research about it or ask me about it if you're going to start a spontaneous practice because there are all kinds of things that come into it that's why i wanted to make a separate video um you're going to start to process emotions that you didn't know you had so you're going to start to cry and you're going to start to laugh hysterically and not know why um you're going to start to have visions of old dreams that you completely forgot about come through your head and you're processing them and you don't know why. You're just clearing out old stuff, clearing out old stuff, clearing out old stuff. And as it gets away, and if you continue and persist in that lifestyle or whatever, then all of a sudden <laughs> you start to have more joy, you start to have more bliss, you start to have more zest and zeal for life in your everyday life. That's how I recommend somebody get out of their funk. It's no short order, obviously, but, you know, living a vivacious life, vivacious, a life full life, that doesn't make any sense. Living a vivacious existence <laughs> is no short order anyway. So, that's the stuff I recommend. So you get out of your funk. But, <laughs> If you don't want to pursue that, there are still a million other avenues. Basically, it comes down to what you're putting in your body, what you're clearing out of your body, and energy, just energy, energy work. Learn Reiki, or learn Yekadua, or whatever. If you don't want to go into spontaneous practice and do that, or whatever, then you can get an external form of energy, like Reiki or whatever, or have somebody open you up to that current so that you can pull it into your body whenever you want to and use that to clear your funk away, and that will help too. Okay, that's enough. <laughs>